Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Science, and today I want to compare pure and mixed states in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. We know that probability plays a key role in quantum mechanics because we can only make probabilistic predictions about measurement outcomes. But probability also plays a wider role in science when we only have partial information about our system. For example, when we have a macroscopic system and we have to use statistical mechanics to describe it. What I want to do today is to compare these two types of probability and hopefully convince you that how probability features in quantum mechanics is fundamentally different to how it features when we only have partial information about the system. To make things even even more exciting, there are problems in which both types of probability are important. And what we'll see today is how pure and mixed quantum states are all we need to describe both. Let's go! Let's start with a simple example. Imagine that we have an observable A associated with some physical property and that this is its eigenvalue equation, where lambda n are the eigenvalues and u n the eigenstates. In our example, we're only going to consider two eigenstates, say u1 and u2. We assume they correspond to distinct eigenvalues, so we can straight away say that they are orthogonal. We're also going to assume that they're both normalized. Now imagine that we built a quantum state psi as a linear superposition of these two states, where we insist that the coefficients c1 and c2 obey this relation to ensure that psi is normalized. We're now going to consider what happens when we measure property A in state psi. We know from the videos on measurements that the only possible outcome of a measurement of A is one of the eigenvalues lambda. In this particular example, one option is to get eigenvalue lambda 1, and we'll get it with probability p lambda 1 given by this expression, which we can also rewrite like this. And we also know from postulate 5 of quantum mechanics about state collapse that right after the measurement, the state of the system changes from psi to u1. The other option is to get eigenvalue lambda 2, and we'll get it with this probability, also given by this, and in this case, right after the measurement, the state changes from psi to u2. The state we were just discussing is called a superposition state. What I want to do now is to go over the measuring framework again, but we'll organize it in a specific way that will allow us to compare it with a different framework in a moment. The first step in the framework is to set up the system. In our superposition state, the system is simply made of one state, psi, which is a superposition of u1 and u2. The second step is to select a state. We only have one state, psi, so we have no choice, our state is psi. This step is completely deterministic. The third and final step is to perform a measurement of A. We know from postulate 4 of quantum mechanics that we can have two possible outcomes. We can get lambda 1 with this probability, or we can get lambda 2 with this probability. As we know very well by now, the measurement step is probabilistic. What I want to do next is to create a new framework that will actually lead to the same measurement results, but will get there in a completely different way. This new framework is called the statistical mixture of states. The first step is again to set up the system. Our system is now made of many copies of a state u1 and many copies of state u2. To be precise, we have n1 copies of state u1 and n2 copies of state u2. This number of copies is such that the fraction of copies of state u1, which is n1 over n1 plus n2, is given by the absolute value of c1 squared and the fraction of copies of state u2 is given by the absolute value of c2 squared. The second step is to select a state. What we now do is to pick one state at random from this collection of states, and we may get u1 with this probability, or we may get u2 with this probability. So, in a statistical mixture of states, the second step, which is selecting our state, is probabilistic. Finally, we can now go to the measurement step. In this case, as both u1 and u2 are eigenstates of the operator A we're measuring, then we know with certainty what the result of the measurement will be. If we have state u1, then the result will be lambda 1, and if we have state u2, then the result will be lambda 2. This step is therefore deterministic. Now that we have these two frameworks, let's compare them. Both frameworks have a probabilistic step, but in the first it is here, and arises at the measurement step from the postulate of quantum mechanics, whereas in the second framework it is here, 
and it simply reflects the fact that we only have partial information about our system, something that has nothing to do with quantum mechanics, and that can also happen in classical mechanics. So these two frameworks are fundamentally different. However, the surprising thing is that from the point of view of performing a measurement, the two situations are actually completely equivalent, they give the same answer. All we can predict in both cases is the probability of a given outcome, and the probabilities that we predict in both cases are the same. For lambda 1 it is given by this, and for lambda 2 it is given by this. So what's really going on? I mean, this seems to suggest that we could obtain the correct result of a measurement, not by following what we've claimed are the rules of quantum mechanics in the first framework, but instead by having a framework in which measurements are deterministic, and all that happens is that we don't have enough information about the system, such that we don't know which of the two possible states here, u1 or u2, will pick. In the rest of the video I want to further explore these two frameworks, and we'll actually learn that we need to become familiar with both, because although they apply to different situations, they're both very useful. So with this, the first thing I want to do is to convince you that there is no way to avoid probabilistic measurements in quantum mechanics. The correct way to calculate measurement outcomes in quantum mechanics does require superposition states. To do this, we need to consider our original observable A, with its associated eigenvalue equation, and the second observable B, with its own associated eigenvalue equation. What we'll see is that the two frameworks we were discussing, that gave the same answer when we were trying to predict what happened when we measure A, actually give different answers when we try to measure B, and only one of these is consistent with quantum mechanics. Let's start with the superposition state, and let's use again the same superposition of u1 and u2. What's the probability of getting a particular mu m when we measure b in state psi? Using the rules of quantum mechanics, this probability is given by the absolute value squared of this bracket. We can expand psi in terms of u1 and u2 and multiply through to get this. The absolute value squared is given by the product of the complex conjugate of the argument, multiplied by the argument itself. Carrying out the multiplication, we can start with this term times this term, which gives this, then this term times this term, which gives this, and then the cross terms that can be combined to this. Now feel free to pause here for a moment to convince yourself of this multiplication step, where I've used the fact that the sum of a number plus its complex conjugate gives twice the real part. But moving on, there is the probability of getting mu m when we measure b in the superposition state psi. Now what happens in the case of a statistical mixture of states? In this case, we have state u1 with probability c1 squared, and state u2 with probability c2 squared. If we have u1, then the probability of getting mu m is simply this, and if we have u2, the probability of getting mu m is this. Putting this together, the total probability of getting mu m is the probability of having u1 in the first place, times the probability of getting mu m in state u1, plus the probability of having u2, times the probability of getting mu m in state u2. Okay, so now we come to the key point of this slide. If we compare the probability up here for a superposition state, with the probability down here for a statistical mixture of states, we see that the predictions are different for a measurement of b. In the case of a superposition state, we have this extra term here that is not present in the case of a mixture of states. This term is called the interference term and is essential. The predictions of quantum mechanics only agree with experiment if this term is included. Even one of the most basic quantum mechanical experiments, the double slit experiment, cannot be understood unless we include this interference term. This shows that the correct framework to describe quantum mechanics is the one corresponding to superposition states. Although statistical mixtures may occasionally lead to the same predictions as quantum mechanics, in general they'll fail. Let's go back for a moment to the comparison between our two frameworks. We've just seen that although for a measurement of A these two frameworks predict the same probabilities down here, only superpositions of states are consistent with quantum mechanics when we try to measure a second physical property B. However, a statistical mixture of states can still be important. Just like we do in classical mechanics, 
we may encounter situations in quantum mechanics in which we don't have enough information about our system. In these cases, we do need to consider statistical mixture of states. These statistical mixtures come with their own probabilistic step here, but it has nothing to do with the postulate of quantum mechanics. It simply reflects the fact that we don't have enough information about our system at the state selection step. When we have a quantum mechanical system for which we only have partial information, then what we need to do is to consider both this probabilistic step, which arises from the lack of information, and this probabilistic step, which arises from the postulate of quantum mechanics. To finish, I simply want to describe some commonly used nomenclature for what we've been discussing. If we know everything there is to know about our quantum system, then probability is a purely quantum effect that arises when we perform measurements. When this happens, we say that we have pure states. As an example, the state psi that we've been discussing today is a pure state. If instead we only have partial information about our system, then probability enters in two places. First, we have the quantum mechanical probability associated with measurements, just like we do for pure states. But second, the lack of knowledge about our system means that we must also use probability to describe which state we're actually dealing with in the first place. This has nothing to do with quantum mechanics and is something that also happens in the classical world. When this happens, we say we have mixed states. An example that you'll often encounter when we only have incomplete information about our system arises when we have a macroscopic system with a number of particles of the order of Avogadro's number. With so many particles, it is impossible to fully characterize the system, be it classically or quantum mechanically. What we do instead is to use probability in the context of statistical mechanics. For example, a system at thermodynamic equilibrium at temperature T has a probability of being in a state of energy E proportional to e to the minus e over kbt, where kb is Boltzmann's constant. So, a mixed state in quantum mechanics is a state for which we only have partial information in this sense. For example, the state could be psi1 with probability p1, psi2 with probability p2, and so on. For this to make sense, the sum over the different probabilities must add to 1 because the system is in some state. Note that each of these states, psi1, psi2, and so on, are pure states, so each has the quantum mechanical probability associated with it when we perform a measurement. However, we don't know in which of these pure states our system is. This is where the p probabilities come in. They tell us how likely each pure state is. The p probabilities are independent of quantum mechanics, they simply encode our lack of knowledge about the state of the system. Pure states are probably what you're most familiar with from studying quantum mechanics, even if you hadn't called them by this name. For example, in our series on the postulates of quantum mechanics, all we've been using are pure states. But mixed states also play an important role, for example to describe macroscopic systems with many particles for which an exact description is impossible. An area where mixed states are essential is in quantum statistical mechanics. And a very good starting point for you to start learning about that is to check our videos on the density operator. And as always, if you like the video, please subscribe.